Okay, so what we're doing today is looking at cash flows, and it's the last topic that we have for the semester and for the year, and hopefully for you guys, the last time you ever have to look at ASR cash flows again. Now, cash flows is a little bit different from the things that we've been doing before, because the issue around cash flows is not so much does man management have a choice of recognition or disclosure, or does management have a choice of accounting methods? Cash flows is pretty much is a cash flow, an operating cash flow, a, pre, a financing cash flow, or an investing cash flow. It's very much around presentation. Um, and so we're going to have a look at all of that. So to start things off, what are cash flows? What do they tell us in the information provided by them? And then the regulation of cash flows, which I've alluded to, why is it required and what is it? And pretty much what it is, is how do we present this stuff? And we'll show some examples of why the presentation becomes important. Um, and it absolutely is. You can have the same piece of information presented differently and it will affect people's decision making. So cash flows according to paragraph six are simply inflows and outflows of cash and cash equivalents. It sounds pretty straightforward. I mean, it's a cash flow and it's an inflow or an outflow. Now, cash is relatively straightforward. Cash equivalents we'll have a look at. Um, so we haven't really talked about these, but that's still relatively, relatively straightforward what we're doing here. So statement of accounting concept two looks at the types of information we need for users to be able to make decisions. Um, and it's performance information, it's positional information, and it's financing and investing information. Now a statement of cash flows does include all of that. We can see in terms of the operating cash flows, is your business in terms of how it actually runs, does it make cash? If you're burning through cash, that's not sustainable in the longer term. I mean, depending on the life cycle of the business, you can have a negative cash flow from operations and that's okay because it might be a startup, it might be in a growth phase and, and these things do happen. But ultimately, you do need to have operating cash flows positive because otherwise, where are you getting your money from? Um, definitely helps with financing and investing because you get to see where the financing cash comes from and where it's going and where the investing cash, and cash comes from and where it's going. Um, and in terms of position, I mean, cash is obviously a pretty useful thing to know about. And if you've got zero cash available and you've got you know, liabilities that are due, there's an issue there. So cash definitely does help provide you some information of, about how risky that company is. Now, the big thing with cash and there's an argument here that cash flows, so we have a statement of cash flows and we have your profit and loss statement. Now profit and loss shows you your net profit, cash flows will show you, we'll just limit it down at this moment, your cash flow from operations. They both tell you how the company is performing. But there are going to be some important differences. And if we look at this, this is a case in point. So let's imagine, for argument's sake, it's obviously not that realistic, but let's imagine this company, it's the first year of operations. It has zero expenses, just for whatever reason, it has zero expenses. The only thing that it has done is made sales of $100,000 and it has collected $95,000. That's the only thing that's happened. So obviously not that realistic. Um, its net profit, given that it's got zero expenses, is going to be $100,000. And its cash flow from operations is going to be $95,000. And we're all, you know, everyone should look at that and be pretty happy that that's the case. Now, why are these differences important? Mechanically, at least for simple examples, this is what happens. You have whatever your profit is, and then you adjust that profit figure by how accruals change. So not if, there's just a, if there are accruals there, if the accruals are changing. So if accounts payable has increased or decreased, if accounts receivable has increased or decreased, that's what we're picking up on there. So if accruals have changed, we end up with cash flow from operations. So in this case, we had $100,000 of profit. We had accruals being adjusted by $5,000. And in this particular case, the way that you deal with 
an increase in accounts receivable would be to, de to minus that from that profit figure. And we end up with cash flow from operations of 95,000. Now, the point of this is just to pick up, if we had a cash flow statement, this is the number that you'd see. Profit state, or statement of financial performance, that's what you'd see. The reason why having a profit figure, or sorry, a cash flow figure is good is because if management have incentives to adjust some of this, it's not going to be collecting cash where they can do most of that, that adjustment. Like if you've collected $95,000 of cash from me, holding aside that, you know, could be just out and out fraud, but if you've collected $95,000, we should be able to verify that. We should be able to look in your bank account and go, you've got $95,000 there. Um, we should, if those are all legitimate transactions, which hopefully is the case, um, we should be able to see that there are sales of $100,000. Um, hopefully, you know, in this case, there's not really going to be a lot of subjectivity in this. But imagine of this $5,000, we have to estimate the bad debts that are going on. And that's a subjective number, and that starts to change what we go on here. Imagine if we have other expenses, which are estimates, which aren't, aren't necessarily cash flows. If you think about depreciation, and if you think about how depreciation is calculated, there's estimates in that, that's a subjective number. So in terms of what can be out of these two numbers, which combined give you your profit, this is a lot harder to manipulate. It's not impossible, but it's a lot harder to, to start to play around with. It's in the accruals where manipulation can happen, and it may not be necessarily purposeful, it's just errors can creep in. Now, what's the, what this is, is the note, the reconciliation in the notes to the Qantas accounts. And what you can see here, it's not the whole thing, because if, we, if I added the whole thing in, it'd probably go down to the floor. They had a $6 million profit and the first adjustment that they make is to add back depreciation. And that depreciation, so this would ultimately, if you added all these down and, and feel free to go to the notes um, and have a look for yourself, ultimately that will end up with cash flow from operations at the bottom. The big adjustment is the $1.4 billion of depreciation. And we absolutely know that's based on estimates on how they come up with depreciation expense. So, there is room to play between what happens with profit and what happens with cash flow, and it's primarily around accruals.